should I put the camera today? Is this a good spot? Maybe this is sad. Maybe it's not. Oh well, hopefully I'm in frame. <laughs> I have an exciting thing to share with you guys. Basically, can you not eat my contacts, please? I am one of those people who does not go to the doctor as often as I probably should. Doctors kind of freak me out. Not in like a actually terrified kind of way. For some reason, the whole going to the doctor process has always been something that intimidated me and like made me feel super uncomfortable and was something that I basically put off until I absolutely had to. And that's something I need to get out of the habit of doing because I'm a grown up and grown ups do what they're supposed to do and they go to the doctor when they're supposed to go. So a couple weeks ago, I was like on my phone or reading something. I don't really know what exactly happened, but I was reading a terrifying story about somebody who was my age, like about 23 or 24 years old, went to get her like annual exam, like pap smear and everything and found out she had like stage three or something um, cervical cancer and I was like well that's kind of terrifying I've never had a pap smear before in my life and I feel like I probably should do that to make sure that I don't have stage 3 cervical cancer you're supposed to start getting pap smears like the, the guidelines or whatever you're supposed to start getting your pap smear at 21 years old and then if you get normal results you're supposed to get it every three years after that initial like exam. So I was like, okay, well, I'm turning 24 this year. I should probably stop putting that off and I should probably just go get my pap smear. So I did. I went to the doctor and I was like, okay, <laughs> I've never done this before. I've heard not good things. I, I talked to this, he was like a super, super nice doctor, very gentle and was just basically walking me through the entire process because I was like, I don't even know like what is going on. And well, um, I got checked out. I had the delightful feeling of a tiny spatula scraping against my cervix for, I mean, honestly, like maximum, like between five and 10 seconds. Like it, it did not take very long at all. It was uncomfortable, but it was not painful. They basically said that they get the cultures and the results back sometime between like a week and like two weeks. And I was like, okay, that is not bad. Hopefully we hear good news. <laughs> and I just got the results that they came back normal, which is fantastic. And so I'm just like in kind of a good mood because it's kind of like sweet, you know, I don't have to do that again for three years. It's been one of those things that has been like eating away at me for like since I turned 21 because I was like, I need to get this done. And I kept putting it off because I was scared and I was nervous and it, it was not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. So if you're reading this, reading this, <laughs> if you're watching this and you're like, dang, I haven't had my pap smear, I've never had a pap smear, or something like that, just go do it. Get it done to make sure that you don't have cancer because nobody likes cancer. It's not that bad. It's really not. It was uncomfortable, it was not painful, it was just, it was a little awkward, but it was not that bad. And it's important for your health. Okay, now we're gonna move this thing back. Thanks for being my tripod. <laughs> Time to get ready for the gym and I know I either sound like a broken record at this point or Maybe this is exciting for you guys, too. I'm excited. I'm standing in front of my mirror right here And I just feel so good about what I'm seeing in the mirror and it's a big deal because I'm just like I'm just like in love with what I'm seeing and like the changes that I'm feeling and everything. I've been taking progress pictures and like I've been filming like progress videos like this entire time. Not this entire time, but especially since I've been back in Las Vegas, it's been a lot easier to like do that stuff. So I'll be sharing with those those with you guys like shortly. I'm not quite ready to share them yet, but I'm, I'm really excited. And <laughs> this might be inappropriate. I don't really care, but my biggest trouble point was actually my butt. Like I did not have a butt at all. And look, like Noelle has like torn up a toy over here. But 
I did not have a butt at all and now I have a little bit of a butt and it's a big deal. It's super exciting because that was the entire reason I started going to the gym. I am not even lying. I wanted a butt. Part of the entire reason I started going to the gym was because I was tired of feeling like I had a pancake butt. Not even joking, I wanted like, I wanted an attractive butt, okay? <laughs> and I feel like I'm start, like finally, it's like rounding out a little bit and it's like lifting a little bit. It also helps that my, my midsection is definitely slimming down a lot, which makes my butt look way better anyway, cause it like balances out and, <sighs> I'm just really excited. <laughs> I know that might not seem like a big deal to some people and I know that some people might be like, you should work out for like how you feel, not how you look. And it's like, that's true too. I definitely am working out partially because I want to feel good, like physically. I want to, I want to be able to be strong. I want to be able to lift things when I need to lift things and like run when I need to run. <laughs> for the most part, that's been happening, but it also helps when I want to look hot too, so. Booty gains are happening and I'm all about them booty gains. So I just wanted to share that with you. <laughs> that was another really good workout, but I feel like I'm going to feel it tomorrow. When you first start working out, like for the first time in like a really long time, usually you get what they call DOMS, D-O-M-S, delayed onset muscle soreness and usually it <laughs> it's like cripplingly sore like two-ish or so days after your initial workout and it's really discouraging because you're like oh my god am I gonna feel like this every time I leave the gym um, and it goes away like you your muscles get used to it and you you get used to like working them in a way that you're unused to um, <laughs> you're still gonna get like occasionally sore but it won't be as bad as like the first like time. So like the first month or so, I was like constantly sore. Like certain muscle groups, I would just not be able to move them at all. But since that initial really bad soreness, it hasn't been too bad. I haven't gotten that sore, but I have a feeling tomorrow and the next day, I'm going to be pretty freaking sore. And the reason for that is because I was doing deadlifts. And deadlifts, there is not an exercise that I think makes me more sore than deadlifts do in the best way possible. Like if I do deadlifts, chances are the following day or two, I'm gonna feel it hardcore in my hamstrings. And like even right now, I'm, I have to balance the camera on the steering wheel right now because my, like I'm shaky. Anyway, I, Hope I don't smell too bad because now I have to go to the store <laughs> and I don't want to shower before I go to the um, store because I only have to pick up one thing and that is sauce. I need to get sauce because tonight I'm going to make like zucchini pasta with shrimp. Should be pretty good. A, I hope the grocery store isn't really super packed and B, I hope I don't smell that bad. Like I just washed these clothes so the clothes probably don't smell that bad but then again, I just had a hardcore workout and I probably smell a little bit. I guess we're gonna see. <laughs> all right, so I am all showered and slightly less offensive smelling, I hope. I am in the middle of cooking dinner and I thought I'd show you guys exactly what I got going on here. In this pan, I have my shrimp cooking with um, two cloves of minced garlic and that's really it. And then in this pan, I have roasted red pepper, which were canned actually. I really like canned roasted red peppers mainly because they're convenient. I don't have the can anymore. But um, these ones were packed in olive oil too, as well as garlic, um, which is awesome because I love garlic. But also, I don't have to use like a huge amount of like extra oil to cook everything. It's kind of like already for me, which is super convenient. And then I threw some zucchini in my food processor and gave it, well, I blitzed it a little bit, which gives it the little noodle-like effect. I threw in here some salt and pepper, some onion powder, and some Italian seasoning. And then this is my sauce all ready to go. I am using arrabbiata sauce because I like a little bit of spice. I actually do really like spicy food. I like arrabbiata sauce. And I also really like Rao's homemade like sauce, like the sauces that Rao's homemade makes. It's expensive. <laughs> the sauce is definitely expensive, but I find it to be worth it, mainly because literally the only ingredients, Italian tomatoes, olive oil, fresh onions, salt, fresh garlic, fresh basil, crushed red pepper, black pepper, and oregano. And that is what I like my food to look like. Okay. 
All right, so this is dinner tonight. It doesn't really look like much, but I bet it'll be really tasty. I actually have no idea how I'm gonna eat all of this. It's quite, it's piled up there pretty high. <laughs> it'll be good, but a lot of food. <laughs> Dinner was really good. I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. And then afterward, I made a single serve cookie. Like I just wanted one cookie because if I bake an entire batch of cookies, I'm gonna eat every single one of those cookies. That's my problem. So I just made one cookie <laughs> and it was good. It was super good. I'm putting the finishing touches on this vlog and then I'm actually gonna get ready for bed. I'm really psyched because this vlog will be up at nine o'clock in the morning and it's just gonna be really, really good. For today's question of the day, pretty unrelated from this vlog in a sense, what is something as you're listening to this vlog or watching this vlog at this very moment, what is something that you are happy about? Right, right this second, what is something that you know deep inside gives you a smile? What is something that makes you happy right now? Obviously, throughout the day, moods are gonna fluctuate, feelings are gonna change. Sometimes, especially if we've had a bad day or got some bad news, it's, it's, it's difficult to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I feel like I've asked very similar questions lately, and for that, I apologize. But I'm hoping right now, right at this very second, we can find some relevancy and and find what's making us happy in this very moment. Do you know what I mean? So right this second, what is something that you're happy about? And on that hopefully happy note, I am going to end the vlog. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Isn't this just the most cozy thing in the entire world? <sighs> I love the lights. I think it makes such a difference. I've also been watching the second season of Jane the Virgin.